everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Ashley and today I'm gonna to be starting a very exciting reading vlog where I read thriller arcs in case you don't know arcs stands for advanced readers copies so they are books that the publishers send out either digitally or in print prior to the publication date so that reviewers can read them early do advanced reviews and get people excited for the books I have just recently started requesting arcs more often from publishers which is something that I hesitated to do for a long time because I just didn't really feel like putting the effort forth to do it honestly and I found that it's very low effort and very high reward because even if you only end up getting like one out of every 20 or so that you request that's still one book that you're super excited for that you get early for free to review and get to read it early. So I've been really thankful for all the publishers who have been sending me advanced copies recently. I've got a little bit of a pile that is piling up now that I need to start knocking out before the publish date. And so today I'm going to be starting a vlog where I read four early copies of thriller books that I've been super excited for that I know you're probably super excited for too, reading them and letting you know what I think about them so that you know which ones are definitely worth picking up when they publish. So the books that I'm going to be reading in this reading vlog are a mix of physical copies I have and ebooks. Those include The Island by Adrian McKinty, The Woman in the Library by Sulari Gentile, The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, and The Latecomer by Jean Hompf Corlitz. I could tell you what those are all about now, but I kind of want you to just be able to jump on into the video and I know that I tell you what they're about once I'm in each portion. So I'll just chapter out the reading vlog in case there are some that you're more interested in than others and you can kind of skip around, but I'll let you know I do find a favorite thriller of all time in this video that I am insanely excited for that I really don't want you to miss. So make sure you at least figure out which one that is so you know which one to pick up. But yeah, with that all being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the video. I'm going to take you back in time to when I was starting the first book, which was The Island by Adrienne McKinty. Hello. So I am 25% into The Island by Adrienne McKinty. I am reading this on my iPad as an ebook through NetGalley. So I don't have the physical copy with me because obviously it's not out yet. And this book gets going really freaking fast. Like it immediately pulls you in and immediately hooks you. These are the types of thrillers I have been wanting to read more lately. This is what I'm calling like a popcorn thriller or like a high action, high stakes thriller. Kind of those thrillers that pose the question, what would you do in this situation? Because I feel like I've been reading so many thrillers lately that are really slow burn or more mystery, set in the past, flashbacks to the past, slow burn, which those have their place too. And I do like those, but I've really been wanting to read more like high action, fast paced, oh my gosh, what would you do in the scenario type thrillers? Because I feel like I find that more in movies and I really, really love that in movies, but I haven't been able to find a lot of that in books that are written by like contemporary authors today. But this is exactly that. It immediately pulls you in. You're following this family who is on vacation in Australia. It is a man, his new wife, and his two children who are 12 and 14. He has a daughter and a son. The daughter is the older one. And the setting is just getting really developed. Like it's just so hot and sticky and I feel like you can really feel the atmosphere of that in the writing and they get the opportunity to go out to this little secluded island. The vibes are kind of off, kind of weird, but the kids really want to go see koalas and so this is their opportunity to try to maybe go see some koalas and feel like the vacation is worth it because they went to Australia for the dad. He's in a conference, he's a doctor, and he's the keynote speaker of some conference. And so it's kind of like a work trip, but they extended it to be a family trip and the kids are trying to have a better time. And so they're like, whatever, we'll go to this island. Something terrible happens and it happens fast and it shocked me. <laughs> That's just like not what I was expecting. And I love that. I love that I didn't know what was gonna happen. So try to not know anything about this book before getting into it so that you can be surprised by that as well. And the stakes are just so high and it makes you question just like, what would you do in this situation? And sometimes I feel like it's easy in movies or books or any kind of media to like judge the people and say, oh my gosh, I would never act that way in the situation. But if you really think about it, like, what would you do in that situation? I have no idea. And so because of that, they end up not being able to leave the island and it's very intense so far. It's a little more like graphic, I guess, than I was expecting. Just feels a little more like horror a little bit with the, not, not goriness, but I don't know. It's just like really intense. Like it feels more like horror right now, which I also think is really cool. And yeah, I'm 
really having a good time with it so far. I do feel like I'm having a little bit of trouble like getting fully immersed in it, but I think that's mostly because it's an ebook and I don't have the best experience all the time reading ebooks. That's a little bit harder for me to like concentrate on an ebook. And I've been reading a lot of audiobooks lately and I wish I had an audiobook, but this isn't out, so I obviously don't have the audiobook yet. But I feel like that's all just like personal things. Overall, I feel like it's a really strong, gripping story so far, and I'm excited to read more of it and see if it can keep my attention all the way through. Hello, very quick update for you today. I am literally about to walk out the door to go to the airport. I have to go to a wedding this weekend and I've got to go like literally right now. But I did finish the island last night and I wanted to update you while it was still fresh instead of waiting until the whole weekend was over to update you on this. This book was so good. Five stars. One of the best thrillers I've read this year for sure. One of the best thrillers I've read since reading No Exit for sure. Like so intense. I had so much physical anxiety reading this book. Survival thrillers are just so effective for me and there's so much of this that felt horror at times. I feel like you could easily classify this book as part horror. It was just so intense. It got so gruesome. I legit the whole time was like I had no idea how these characters are gonna get out of the situation. Like I'm sure they're going to because that's how books typically go but I literally see no path for how they're going to get out of this situation. It was absolutely insane. It kept me on the edge of my seat. My heart was racing reading it. I could not put it down. It was so good. So I highly recommend picking this one up when it comes out. There's like a couple of things that I for sure can't speak to. Like there's quite a bit of mention about the Aboriginal people from Australia and I personally just don't know anything about that. And so, you know, I have no idea if the representation of that, the way that was talked about was sensitive or correct or you know, I, I have no idea. So I'm gonna have to look more into that and hear from other reviewers to see about that. But like the book alone was so thrilling and so good. So yeah, this one was just a very wild time. Very glad I started with this one because I was able to get through it super quickly. And this really makes me wanna pick up Adrian McKinty's other book that I own, The Chain. Apparently Adrian McKinty has a ton of books. I saw that when I got to the end, it's the list of all their books. I guess they just weren't very successful for a while until The Chain and then The Chain popped off and now this came out as well. And I'm like, if all of their books are gonna be like this, I'm in, I'm in for the ride. I will be reading them. This was insane. So yeah, that was The Island. That was a super, super fast wrap up, but I, I'm literally like walking out the door right now. I've got a call lift literally as soon as I finish filming this. But yeah, I am bringing a book with me on my trip. I'm taking The Last Housewife. So that's the next thriller arc I'm gonna be reading. I will probably not tell you anything about it until Sunday when I'm back from my trip. Um, so insert a montage of clips if I take any from this trip here, and then I will see you after the trip. <laughs> I'm sorry, it has been a while since we have spoken. <laughs> but I did read quite a bit of The Last Housewife. I read most of this while I was on the plane. I had a very busy weekend. And then on the plane on the way back, I just slept the whole time because I was exhausted. So most of what I've read so far, I'm almost halfway through the book, was just like on the way, on the flight there. What to say about this book? I guess first I should tell you what it's about because I don't think I've told you what it's about. All I've really heard about it is that it's really dark, disturbing, and about a cult. That's the kind of context I had going into it. What you're following in this story is is this woman named Shay Evans, who is living this like successful life now. She's eight years out of college. She's living in a Texas suburb. And then she hears that one of her old college friends has been found on campus and like she hung herself and she has been found dead. And that deeply disturbs her because apparently another one of her college friends had hung herself as well back in the day. I'm already kind of struggling to remember some of the details, but it's like one of those stories where someone from her past has ended up dead and so then she returns back to this small town to investigate what's going on because she suspects that she didn't really kill herself because back when they were all in college they had gotten caught up in this cult-like environment and she thinks that it has something to do with that. So she returns back to her college town and she is working with a guy she was friends with in college who is now a podcaster. That's actually how she heard about her friend ending up dead is he's a true crime podcaster and he was talking about the death and he's also suspicious that there's 
something else going on. So they're just like investigating what's going on. As they're doing that, she also like is allowing him to record her as part of the podcast. So there's also excerpts that are kind of like a podcast. It's just a conversation between those two. And that's kind of the vibes of the book. Um, I'm personally not enjoying this one a ton so far, but I think this just isn't really my type of story that I'm really looking for right now. There is a lot of bad men in this book and I don't like reading about bad men, particularly lately. I'm just like over it. So that just makes me kind of want to put the book down because I just hate reading about men who just suck so much. And then it also just feels a little like almost tropey with, you know, I've read stories like this a lot where someone goes back to their small town and they're figuring out what happened to their group of friends and you're getting a lot of flashbacks of the past. So it just doesn't feel like particularly intriguing to me right now. It's fine. Like it's in three star territory for me right now, but I'm just not absolutely loving it. There's also the podcast elements just like rub me the wrong way because they just don't read like a person would talk on a podcast. It just reads like writing in a book. So I don't know why it was chosen to make that podcast. Like it's written with like he said this and she said that and da 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 da. And it's like, who speaks like that to be able to speak full quotes of things and conversations that you had eight years ago? Like, I don't know. She'll just go on for like really, really long time, like two full pages. And I'm like, that's not how conversations naturally go on podcasts and maybe it's a little bit nitpicky, but I just don't understand why that was chosen to be in the podcast form other than like trying to capitalize on popularity of podcast elements in thrillers right now. So I'm just not loving that part either. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's okay. I hope the story kind of changes in the second half. I can see a way that it could take a different direction and be more in like the present moment and get more intense and focus less on like trying to untangle the past. So I hope it does that. I feel like I would enjoy it a little bit more if it did that. But to be determined, I don't know. I'm going to keep reading it and then I'll let you know how I feel at the end. Hello, I'm quickly popping in because I just got this package from Macmillan and I don't know what it is. I did cut it open, but I was like, wait, I should probably record because I'm doing a thriller arcs reading vlog and this could be an arc. It's very likely. It could also be a finished copy. I don't know. But I was like, why not just record opening it very quickly? Um, it does feel like a hardcover. So it is probably a published book. So let us see. Oh wait, maybe it doesn't work because there's a little note. Primal animals. Wait, what is this? Uh, that looks so cool. This is like Wilder Girl vibes. I love these covers with faces and things. I know people are sick of them with the animals and the flowers on the girl's face. I am not yet sick of them. I still love these covers. Oh my God, it's a little heart cover. How nice. Maybe it is already out. The next dramatic thriller from Julia Lynn Rubin. This book is perfect for fans of Roy Power, who is the author of Wilder Girls, Minnie McGinnis, and Netflix's Fear Street tri trilogy. On sale May 24th. So that is pretty soon, like next week maybe. Um, and it's from Wednesday Books. But wow, I love these covers. The back of it says, sorry, the back of it says it is the female of the species meets Midsommar. I don't know what the female of the species is, but I do love Midsommar. And the little blurb says, at an elite summer program, a teen girl gets sucked into a secret society with deadly consequences. Amazing. I'm trying to figure out too. I think these are like moths or butterflies. I thought it was snakes at first, but I think it's a moth and it goes like over her eye. That is very cool. Thank you so much. I'm glad I decided to open this. That was exciting. <laughs> <gasps> Even more exciting, I just startled my dog. There are moth stickers in here that say protect the girls. Wow, those are very creepy and cool. How fun. And a little author signing, how fun. Okay, back to regularly scheduled programming. Let's talk. I finished The Last Housewife and I'm gonna start with the positives. I like the idea of this book. I particularly like the inspiration of the frame narrative and how that is incorporated in the book, which I just won't say anything about. Um, but once you read the book, you will know what I'm talking about. And I liked that. It's like subtle, but cool and clever. And I liked it. After reading the acknowledgements at the end, it's clear that this was a very personal book for Ashley Winstead to write and that it means a lot to her and that she really went on a limb
limb writing it because it's something that she was really worried might not be received well that a lot of people would see it and say no thank you it's not for me which is exactly what i was going to say but then i read the acknowledgments and then i felt real bad <laughs> but just being honest like as a human being if I didn't have people listening to me, if I wasn't reviewing this early and afraid I was going to influence people's decisions, like if just a personal friend in real life who was never gonna pick up this book anyway because they don't read asked me like, oh, did you like that book? I would say, not really. Like I didn't really enjoy this that much. If I had to give it a rating, I would probably give it a personal two star. It just wasn't something that I enjoyed. Obviously I knew what this book was kind of about going into it, that it was dark and cultish, but it's very heavily centered on a lot of sexual violence and similar to how I don't like to read about men who suck. I don't like to read about sexual violence. That's just a personal thing for me. I know everyone has different triggers. There's different things that people can and choose to consume. But for me, that's something that I'm moving away from in my reading is abuse of men, sexual violence. And whatnot. So thematically, had I known that would be so prevalent, I would have anticipated that I wouldn't want to read it necessarily. Um, I'll be honest, I skimmed a lot of the last 100 pages in this because I just was kind of over it at that point. And I don't want to compare this to In My Dreams I Hold a Knife because I know that's probably like one of the worst feelings for authors is when they come out with their second book and then they get like the sophomore syndrome thrown at them from reviewers saying like, oh, the second book's not as good. I have a feeling people aren't going to like this as much as In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. For context, I didn't love in my dreams I hold a knife. I know a lot of people gave that five stars. A lot of people like lost their mind over that and thought it was like one of the best thrillers that they had read last year. I personally gave that like a 3.5 when I read it. I just thought it was like, okay, like average run of the mill, but like a little bit better than that. It just wasn't my absolute favorite thing. So I also didn't have the highest expectations for this coming off of that. And still I liked in my dreams I hold a knife better. But again, like the subject matter of that was something I'm much more comfortable reading than something like this. So that also plays into it for sure. Mostly I just felt like this book was pretty slow and pretty repetitive. When I finish it and I see what the author was doing and building that frame narrative, I understand it and I get it and I see that. And so that's why I'm like, I like the idea of it, but reading it, it didn't really work for me and keeping me super engaged. Like I want to be in a thriller. It read very slow paced and very repetitive for a lot of the time for me, but I've seen other early reviews of people reading this and really, really loving it still. I've seen a lot of solid reviews for this. So could just be a me. Thing. I tend to have a more unpopular opinion and be a little bit harsher on thrillers that people really love. I always end up like loving thrillers that people hate and hating thrillers that people love. So if you have like opposite taste for me, don't let me discourage you. I think I'm just stressed because <laughs> I posted on my story that I was reading this, like didn't say anything about it. Just was like currently reading with a picture of this. And so many people messaged me saying that they were so excited or so jealous that I was getting to read it early and they hope that it's amazing. They hope that I love it and they can't wait to hear what I think about it. And it's one of their most anticipated books of the year and they hope it's as good as they think it's going to be. And I've just been like harding the messages back, like, oh gosh, I'm not enjoying this book and I don't wanna let you know that. But again, like you probably know if you watch my channel, if our opinions tend to align or not and even no matter what like everyone has a different experience with every book there's plenty of people I watch I typically like the same books as them and then they don't like a book but then I still really like it so I don't want you to be discouraged by this definitely still pick it up I know so many people are still gonna pick it up so many people are still so excited for this but maybe if sexual violence is something you don't want to read about you know that's a choice you have to make on your own whether or not you're gonna pick that up and that was part of what Ashley Winstead said in the acknowledgments I'll actually read the first little paragraph of the acknowledgements because I feel like that sums up her stance on this book pretty nicely. She says, thank you first and foremost to my readers. I've never needed to write a book more nor been more terrified to publish than this one. This book is dark and personal and deals with subject matter. Some people argue doesn't belong in books, films, TV, and so on, despite its continuing prevalence in the real world. After I wrote it, I was worried I'd done the wrong thing. I drew on many of my own experiences in writing the story, but more than being afraid of people reading it, I was afraid that the fact that it involved sexual violence meant that no one would. That the book I was most proud of, the story that was so important to me, would be met with a resounding wall of no thank you, not for me. It's a strange position to be in to want to respect people's desire not to confront something while burning with the need to talk about it, make art about it, be heard. I'm oversharing in the hopes that you will understand the depth of my gratitude when I say thank you for taking a chance on this book. So that's what I meant when I said like, this is clearly such a personal thing for her. This was so important for her to write. This was such an important expression that she needed to go through and art that she wanted to create. And I'm sure so many people will get catharsis out of reading this as well and really appreciate it and really connect to it. But also, 
also some people don't want to pick that up and that's okay every you know it's all okay so <laughs> that's how i feel about this one definitely looking forward to seeing more people pick this up and hear more thoughts about it and i hope it's well received from the majority of people so lastly i'm going to be reading the latecomer by jean Hompf Corlitz. i say this one for last because it is so long and i'm kind of worried that's going to take me a while to get through but i've got some reading sprints scheduled for tomorrow night so hopefully i can read a lot during then but i'm gonna go ahead and start it tonight check out the first 20 to 50 pages or so and then i'll read more and sprints tomorrow and i'll let you know how i'm feeling once i start to get a grasp of the story I just got off of my reading sprints that I was doing with my friends tonight and it was so much fun. We didn't read as much. I mean, I guess we did three 30 minute reading sprints, but I feel like I didn't read as much as I sometimes do in reading sprints. Like I wasn't as focused on reading, but I just wanted to chat with my friends. It was so much fun. We chatted about so many things like shows we're watching, movies we're watching, true crime cases and our theories around them. So those reading sprints will still be up if you want to go watch them back. Um, highly recommend because it was a very fun time. What I did read during those sprints was The Latecomer by Jean Hop Corlitz to start. And then things took a little bit of a turn. So I only ended up getting like 25-ish pages into this. And I just don't think I'm going to want to read this one physically. It's super, super wordy and super dense. And if I really wanted to like sit and soak up a book and spend a lot of time with it, something like really well written, I'm sure this is going to be a good book, then I would be fine with it. But I don't know. I'm just not in the mood to like read something like that right now. I think some of it associates with the weather for me. Like in the summer, I want to read really quick, fast things. So like popcorn thrillers, romances, magical books, like just really quick things. And then in the fall and the winter is when I like to soak into some slower reads. So I feel like this would be a better fall read for me. I don't know if that means I'm gonna wait until fall, but I do think I need to wait until I have an audiobook of this one to use an audiobook to be able to help me get through it a little bit. Not to say there's anything wrong with it. It's just like a personal thing. It's just a not right now for me. And so I don't think I'm going to continue with this one. So what I decided to do during the reading sprints was pick up another thriller arc that I have, and that is The Woman in the Library by Sulari Gentile. This is coming out either at the end of May or the beginning of June. I'll put the release date on the screen because I can't remember. But I've been really interested in this one for a long time. Ever since I first heard about it, I was super interested in it. Elizabeth has read it and liked it. And she was one of the people on my reading sprints tonight. And I was asking her, like, do you think I would like it? And she said yes. So that's when I decided to substitute for this right now because I didn't really want to end the vlog on a DNF. That just didn't feel right to me. But this is a story that I thought was going to be a locked room murder mystery kind of thing. But it kind of flips that on its head and it also is really meta so far what you're reading is a novel being written and in the novel you're following these characters who are in a library four of them in the boston public library in a reading room there is a loud scream that happens and they're all like oh who just screamed and then like the next day a woman's body is found they all stay connected because of this. Some of them are writers and they're all just kind of interested in like why that woman died, who did it. And they make a little joke about it even in the story where they're like, this is a reverse locked room thriller because typically the room is locked, someone is murdered, no one can go in or out and you're trying to figure out who did it. But in this case, they were in a room, they heard a scream from another room, then there was a space of time before the body was found. So what happened in that space of time? Was the scream a coincidence? Like what's going on? So that's kind of the setup of the story. And then there's also extra you're reading that are letters being written to the person who is writing the novel that is giving them feedback on the novel they're writing. So it's super meta and it was super confusing at first, but I think I understand. I'm currently 17% of the way in. That's how far I got during the reading sprints. And I'm actually really liking it so far. It definitely is confusing and it definitely requires more brain power to try to piece together what's going on. But it's also written in a more light way and I really like the tone of it. It's kind of quirky and kind of funny and witty. Like it feels kind of like a classic cozy mystery, not cozy mystery, 
mystery in what cozy mystery means as a genre, but just like a mystery that is a murder mystery that feels cozy to me is what I mean when I say that. But yeah, I'm liking it so far. I think this is gonna be a good choice to close out the vlog. I have good feelings about it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep reading that one. Right now I'm gonna go to bed because it's late after these reading sprints. But then tomorrow I will read more of it and I'll let you know what I think. Hello, good morning. I figured I would pop in and give you a quick little update on the woman in the library. I wasn't going to give an update until I was done with the book, but I just filmed another video. So I figured I might as well just pop in and give a quick little update while I'm here. I made it to about 70% in the book last night. So I'm almost done with it. I'll finish it here in a little bit, but for a quick little midway update on how the book is going, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this one. I'm really curious to see how it's gonna end. It feels a little bit directionless to me at times. And I think that might just be because I was expecting it to be more of a locked room mystery, but it really ends up being more of like a runaway train type of story, kind of. I don't know, it's just like hard to explain. Like the story that you're following is mostly the novel that this woman is writing in which these four characters met in a library, someone screamed, ended up dead. And then since then they've stayed connected with each other and they're just like going about their lives kind of. And then more threats sort of start to come into their lives and a certain character starts to look pretty suspicious as you learn more about their past but I'm kind of like I don't know it just doesn't really feel like a super solid plot if that were the book like I can't imagine reading that as a thriller because there's nothing kind of like hooking you or keeping you continually engaged in the story I'm like why would these four strangers stay connected just because they happen to be sitting in a room together when someone got murdered that just doesn't seem like something that would happen and so I feel like we need a little more grounding as like a reason the characters stay connected and sometimes when I'm reading parts of it too like it feels a little bit incomplete as a narrative and I wonder if it's supposed to feel that way because you're like reading what an author is writing as a first draft but it's just like you jump scenes or it doesn't feel like a scene's fully developed or it doesn't feel like a character's fully developed I don't know I'm just like it feels weird to be reading what is supposedly like a first draft, but that takes up the main portion of the book. And so it's also like the book that you're reading. So I'm kind of struggling with that and wondering where it's going. I will say like, I'm still engaged in the story. And just because I have no idea where it's going, it keeps me reading because I'm like, where the heck is this story gonna go? Like, what is the point of this? What is this book trying to do? How am I going to be intrigued in this? Like, even if I find out that there's a killer in the story, it's like, none of it's real because I'm just reading a story, which I know you're always reading a story, but something about it being like you're reading a story within a story. I don't know. I'm just like not as hooked in it as I thought I might be. There is something that like happens at one point in the book that raises the stakes a little bit or like creates a little like I don't know how to explain it. There's an interesting element that's like introduced in terms of what's going on with the person who's writing the book, like the real world inside of the story that you're reading. It's very confusing to explain, but yeah, I don't know. I could see it kind of becoming interesting if it does something really cool by the end and really liking it, or I could see myself ending up just kind of feeling okay with it if nothing interesting really happens. I don't really know. This is kind of why I didn't want to do a midway update because I just feel so uncertain about this. I have no idea where it's gonna go, if it's all gonna come together, if it's all gonna fall apart, like it's kind of hanging in the air right now. It could really go either way, but yeah, I don't know. So I'm going to finish it today. I only have like an hour left to read of it. And then I'll let you know how we end up feeling by the end of the book. Back again, same spot, a couple hours later. And I did finish The Woman in the Library by Slara Gentil. I feel a little upset <laughs> at that ending. I feel a little unsatisfied with the ending of the book. It didn't ruin the experience for me. I think I'm gonna end up giving this one a three star because I thought the story was just kind of like fine. I was intrigued enough. It was good. Wasn't great. Didn't love it, but it was good, entertaining enough and an interesting concept. If you remove the frame narrative from the story and it's just you're actually reading what is written down as the story, then it would decrease the rating for me. I think that element does add a little bit of intrigue to the story and it allows me to lower my expectations of the writing of the novel excerpts that you're getting because it's like you're reading novel excerpts you're not reading the actual novel it's not like a full thing that you're reading i mean it is but something about removing me one step out of that, I'm like not as critical on it. But if that was what I was reading and if that was like a book that was like, here you go, this is a thriller, I would be like, what the heck is this? 
So complicated feelings about this one for sure. The ending just didn't do like a lot. When it ended, I was like, are you kidding me? That was the last line. Like, what is that even supposed to mean? I genuinely was like, why is that where we're ending? What I do think is interesting about the story is just like the meta nature of it, that you're reading a person writing a novel and a person writing them critiques the whole way through. So it's really about like the process of writing a novel and the things that come into consideration. So if that's something that interests you, maybe you would like it a little bit more. There's like discussions around whether or not you insert the coronavirus pandemic into stories now a day if you don't does that cause your work to suffer because it's like weird that you wouldn't include that in the story if you're writing in the contemporary timeline and considerations around romance being a portion of thrillers and are all stories really just a romance so some concepts that i think are interesting discussions to be had interesting things that are brought up in those portions but overall i definitely didn't love it or end up feeling super satisfied but i also didn't hate it and i'm not like super passionately upset about anything that went on in the book so I'm gonna slap three star rating on it call it a day and uh that brings us to the end of this reading vlog <laughs> So it was a somewhat successful, somewhat unsuccessful reading vlog, but I did find a new favorite thriller. And I do really think that The Island is going to be the thriller of the summer. It is definitely one of my top favorite thrillers of the year. Gonna be one of my top favorite thrillers of all time, for a while at least, I'm sure. It was just really, really good, really worth it. And I've been screaming at everyone to pick it up. I really think that is a book a lot of people are gonna have a really good time with. The Last Housewife, I didn't have the best time with personally, but I think people will appreciate it for what it is. People People seem to really like Ashley one said stuff so if you liked it my dreams I hold a knife maybe you'll also like this one although they're pretty different and kind of difficult to compare but I hope a lot of people like it more than I did it was just the subject matter really that made me not love the story as much and also that it just felt really slow and repetitive but I get why it was but as a story it wasn't as entertaining as I was hoping for it to be the latecomer ended up being a DNF for me but just a temporary DNF I for sure I'm gonna pick that one back up whenever I can have an audiobook available and whenever I'm in the mood for a more more wordy, rich, well-written kind of book that I can really soak into and really have fully well-developed characters that takes its time building all of that. It's really a book that you have to be okay with it taking its time with you. And I'm just looking for quicker things right now. So it's not the book's fault, just a personal thing. And then The Woman in the Library, which was kind of right around the middle for me. I think some people are gonna really like it. Some people might not. I landed right in about the middle of it. So not a bad time. <laughs> But yeah, that is it for this video. Let me know down in the comments below which books you're most excited to pick up out of this list. Let me know if you're gonna be picking up The Island because it is out by now by the time you're seeing this video. So you can go pick it up and read it literally right now if you want to. And if you wanna leave an emoji in the comments down below to let me know that you got to the end of this video, let's do an island emoji for The Island. I know there's one that's like a beach the palm tree, anything beachy, the island emoji, whatever it is you want to do, leave that in the comments below. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.